There were so many pullouts this morning that attendants chose to train their newest member on how to announce them. More Miss World, less C-3PO was the likely feedback. But over time, we noticed the withdrawals concerned just one stable. And then the web headlines came. Dewanomi Man tests positive for COVID. Every stablemate withdraws, including Ozeki Mitake Umi. My goodness, we thought. Dubious as it sounds, never before had a wrestler tested positive mid-meet. What would become of their ranks? Were results to stand, Mitake would lose Ozeki, which, unable to fully train and in awful form, he hadn't looked like keeping anyway. But then things got very Japanese. Asked point blank if Mitake was going down, this influential man said, We don't know, for we have no fixed policy for these situations. Let's discuss after the tournament. Asked if Mitake could reappear should he test negative, Sumo's press chief replied, I don't see that happening. Though opining personally, I think he spoke for the firm. And that discussion is now academic, as while I write, Mitake too has come back positive. As you've seen, the summer tour posters read, Ozeki Mitake Umi. If he turns up as Sekiwake, it's a miscell. And tonight, even before his PCR, papers were unofficially briefed that his Ozeki status will be kept. Unhelpful, though, is the admission from coach Dewanomi, who's been cleared to work, that his infected lower division wrestler is asymptomatic. Which begs the question, why did the stable even test? For Sumo never tests men without symptoms mid-tournament. Never mind. Shall we lighten the mood? You must deeply feel you haven't made it, when a referee, given just two names to recall, still gets yours wrong. Nope, that's the opponent who's lost. His actual name is... Something to work into this man's ringside comic routine, no doubt. On to serious in-ring business then. You never know when random footage becomes useful. You might remember Wakazakura from my backstage video. He's actually in the thumbnail. Well, that's now one less opponent I have to explain. Asanoyama polishing him off 2 for 4 and 0 oh and elevation. There was gripping action in Division 3 as half Mongolian, half Russian Roga sought a third win from 4 on the second rung. Blocking his view, local hero and Dohyo rope dancer Akiseyama. And it's Roga's signature move. The left foot stamped down to hold ground while the right shifts its axis for the outside left throw. His first salary could be one win away. Going for gold today was unbeaten Kazakh Kim Bozan, facing ever-improving Kamito, who was also 3-0.
And Borzan, true to the kin part of his name, struck gold. With a hodgepodge of tense moves, will excuse given the stakes, somehow resulting in a glorious scooping chance which he fully took. He got me with the right hook, so hard I was stunned, Borzan said. But I was cool enough to slot that right inside. Nothing's confirmed yet with regards to promotion and I'll be pursuing further wins, but today, I feel, was a big one. Indeed it was, for if he's like most other wrestlers and pours through the chart, he will know that absent Ishida is destined for Division 3, thus clearing a space for him. Mere inches in front of the second tier trapdoor are Tochimaru and Chiyosakae promoted in March and May, respectively. Q teeth-bearing slugfest. Well, we can't say Maru wasn't warned. Sakae's numb jaw from this hook is the sign he will not out-hit this foe, hence his bid to parry. Maru, so absorbed in quick-fire thrusts, misses every sign, maniacally trying to land that killer right while Sakae merely loosens and deflects. Great to watch for the neutral, In Division 1, disaster for Takanosho, forced out, ironically, with the same kind of injury as has Mitake Umi, right shoulder. But as no one he knows has COVID, his rank will plummet. In an actual bout, disaster befell his stablemate. caught and tossed like a beanbag after a curious Mainomi-style feint. And unlike for his high school junior Kitamawaka, there was no one there to catch him. I'll need to see the replay, but he looked pretty low and ripe for catching, so my body reacted, said Abi, who described well enough what that replay would show. Could Shodai then build on yesterday's surprise win and restore today's Ozeki pride, vociferously backed against the tournament leader? <laughs> yes, he could. A good hard forearm to thwart the frontal left, and heavy parry to stun the sleepwalking giant. It was all about the angle of knees and hips in the charge to avoid being stood up, short I explained. He often beats me, so I tried something new. He may well keep Ozeki from here. Thus could Tedonofuji shuffle back into title contention against this awkward foe. Quite comfortably, Uda trying to swing and push from the side, but finding the weight too great to move. You might think I made headway, but it was total defeat, said Uda. Teru I don't think spoke, 
but papers point out that 5-2 and two after 7 days was enough to bring him the title last time. So that was our Saturday packed with more violent twists, turns and swerves than an Enho bout. Let's hope for relative peace tomorrow.